Welcome to the Sage 300 training video. Today's topic is Accounts Payable Vendors. For this training, we are working in the Sage provided sample company. To begin, let's take a look at the vendor screen and its component parts. First, we navigate to Accounts Payable AP Vendors Vendors. Upon opening the screen, we can either create a new vendor or select an existing one. Let's explore our existing vendors, and in a bit, we will create a new vendor. To begin exploring our vendors, we have a few ways to navigate through our list of vendors. Our first option is to type in a number if you happen to know it. For example, if I want to go straight to Fred's cleaning service, I could type in their vendor ID number of 5080, hit tab, and view their data. I could use the arrow keys to move forward and back to the beginning and to the end. If I need to do a search, I could use the search or finder icon. In the search window, I can select the field I would like to search on. I can select starts with or contains and then begin to enter the data. So if I select vendor name, contains, and start to type in supply, I then see a few entries. I can select one, say Stewart Office Supplies, double click on it and pull up the vendor. We see at the top of the screen a vendor number and name. The number is the only field that cannot be directly changed in this screen. The name field can hold up to 60 characters. Next, we have the group code field. When creating a vendor, this field will pre-populate with a few fields on the processing, invoicing, and optional field tabs. Otherwise, it is used to group like vendors together for reporting. The business registration number is used for tax compliance reporting in some jurisdictions, such as Singapore and Malaysia. Before we hit the address section, we can see if the vendor is on hold, when it was last maintained, and if they are inactive. The short name is a 10 character field and can be used for custom reporting where a shortened version of the name is appropriate. The start date indicates when the vendor was created. The remaining fields indicate the company's legal name. There are four possible lines for address information, city, state or province, zip or postal code, a country field, a phone, fax, email, and website addresses. The next tab, contact, contains four fields allowing for the tracking of a person, their phone, fax, and email at the vendor. On the processing tab, the vendor's account set is maintained. The account set defines, among other things, the general ledger account to be used as the AP trade account. The terms code identifies the typical terms granted to you by the vendor. The bank code defines the primary bank from which to pay the vendor. And the payment code defines the primary type to pay the vendor, such as check, credit card, or wire. These four fields are initially defined by the vendor group selected on the first tab, but can be changed at any time. The language field can be used to help define the language a check should be printed in. The delivery method field has three options. The default is mail. The contacts email refers to the email address on the contact tab, and the email option refers to the email address on the address tab. When the print destination option is used elsewhere in Sage 300, such as on the purchase order, the delivery method field will determine if an email can be generated. If so, which one is to be used, or if a paper version of the document will need to be printed. Finally, on this tab, there is an option to generate separate payments for each invoice and an option to track your credit limit with the vendor. When selected, the Generate Payments function will create one check per invoice instead of placing multiple on the same check. Moving to the Invoicing tab, here we can define an option as to how invoices will be created in invoice entry. A vendor can have a distribution code or set or a GL code predefined, or nothing predefined. Optional duplicate checking can be performed at the document level. So if the vendor and amount or vendor and date are duplicates, the system can warn or error out if needed. The vendor needs a tax group. This is to track sales taxes paid to a vendor so that they can be reclaimed from your taxing authority. If retainage accounting is set up in your AR options setup, retainage fields will be available for entry. If a vendor needs to be tracked for 1099 or CPRS reporting, this option 
can be selected here. Upon selection, additional fields become available. We can track the tax ID number for the vendor, what code they should be reported under, and what type of number is the vendor. For example, a Social Security number or Federal Tax ID number. The Optional Fields tab allows a place for custom fields needed for reporting or processing customizations. There are Statistics and Activity tabs, which keep track of a variety of pieces of information about the vendor and your history with them. Finally, there is a Comments tab where notes pertaining to the vendor can be stored. If you make any changes, you can select the Save button at the bottom. If you go to Close Out, or if you navigate to another vendor and did not save, you will be prompted to save your changes. Now let's put into action what we have learned by creating a new vendor. Open up the vendor screen, or press the green icon to get a clean page if you are already in the vendor screen. Enter a vendor number. This should be consistent with your vendor ID schema. In this case, we will use 8000. Enter a vendor name. We will use Equation Technologies. For our group code, we will use SVC for service purchases. Now let's go ahead and enter an address and related information. And we can enter some information on the contact tab. We will review the data entered on the Processing and Invoicing tabs, and we can make edits as needed. For example, we can set the vendor to distribute by GL account and select GL code 6640. We can also change our tax class to 2. We can set any needed optional fields. When we are done, we can click Add. This will create the vendor in the system, and we can now create invoices and payments on them. This concludes our training. If this was helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. For more information, please visit us at equationtech.us or contact us at info at equationtech.us. Thank you for watching and have a great day.